Let's give the Lord a clap offering, everyone. God is good. Somebody said all the time and all the time God is good. Amen. We're looking forward to God's word today and I want to welcome those who are joining us around the world as we stream live today. I pray that you have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit will say to the church. As you know, this is Black History Month, and I'm going to be featuring someone from the Bible and from someone in the African American community every week. We did last week and the week before, and we will also do the same today. I want you to know that as we get into the word of the Lord, we are going to pray that God speaks loud to each one of us. I'm going to abbreviate my message today because we have other events coming up today and so I will finish this teaching in a Bible study. My message today is in title, Finding That King or Queen in You. Finding That King or Queen in you from Matthew's gospel chapter 12 beginning at verse 38 I'm gonna ask that you read along with me Matthew's gospel chapter 12 this is what is on the mind of God as we engage the scriptures please allow me to know if we are dismissing the children for children's church right after this reading we will release the children. From Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, follow along with us as we read together on the big screen, beginning at verse 38. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Be careful when you ask God for signs. You might not want the sign that he gives you. In the next verse, but he answered the words of Jesus. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign will be given to it notice this except the sign of the prophet Jonah for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they, rep they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here the queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and indeed a greater then Solomon is here. The queen of the south is the queen of Sheba. The king of Israel that we celebrate as the greatest is King Solomon. When you find the king or queen that is in you, your life will change forever. We thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Let the church say, Amen. 
You may be seated and our children are dismissed for children's church. As we look to the word of the Lord today, we want you to embrace a prophetic word. I placed it in my introduction. When God is working in someone's life, he is changing them and changing the direction of their destiny. God, Tim, is a kingmaker and a queen maker. We don't become better people without other people. Jesus used two people to describe how he would judge the world. The man was Jonah. And the woman was the queen of the south. Her name is not mentioned, but history tells us her name. Her name was Makeda, which means greatness. As we look to the word today, let me share with you, God always has a way of confirming his word. How many of you wake up with praise and worship in your house? Get to see you, Nick. You put a smile on my face. You too, man. You too. I am happy to celebrate with you today. As we look to God's word, I, I want you to know that God has a unique and interesting way of confirming his word. I wake up with worship. I wake up with prayer. I wake up listening for God's voice. Not just on Sunday, but every day. Every day. And before I could drive to church, Ravina, I heard someone on the radio say something like this, follow me. Everybody is not going to like you. I'm going to say it again. Everybody is not going to like you. But remember everybody don't matter wow everybody's not gonna like you but for real for real Michael everybody don't really matter there's a king in you and there's a queen in you that God wants to bring out. God is a king maker. And he's a queen maker. I want to recognize a minister that is in the house with us today. One of my spiritual daughters who's having a women's conference right here at Spirit of Liberty in the month of March. Stand up, Minister Patty. All the way from Alexandria. Is it Shreveport? From Shreveport, give it up for Minister Patty. God bless you. you. You will hear more and you will see more about that upcoming conference for women right here uh, uh, in the month of May. It's going to be around Mother's Day. It's coming up. I have to say that sometimes, hear me, we are too concerned about the people who don't like us. When in reality, everybody don't matter. Only 
certain people matter anyway. So when we get into the word today, I am so excited to share it with you. I've included a word of wisdom from your bishop. I'll ask that you get a screenshot of it and you might want to share it with someone else later. God spoke this to me and I'm sharing it now with you. Your success in life is dependent on how you handle your own demons. And the evil things people will do to you. Wow. Everyone is not going to like you. All right, so get this. I'm going to leave it on the screen for a moment. Your success in life is dependent on how you handle your own demons and the evil people will do to you. Let me share with you that success never comes alone. Failure never comes alone. If you succeed, other people were involved. If you fail, other people were involved. So when we look to God's word, I want you to understand that whether you want to accept it or not, your success in life is dependent on how you handle your own demons. So let me talk about that for a moment. Follow me. Every one of us have areas in our lives where we're growing. You're not the man or the woman that you are today without having to have grown to be who you are. But everyone is fighting their own demon. You know your demon. Every individual know their demon, know their struggle. And so let's make sure we don't get it twisted. Everybody's fighting something. Give it up, church. Amen. Everybody is fighting something. Everybody's fighting something. So your success or failure in life is going to depend greatly on how you deal with your own demons. So back in the day, the, there was a group that would sing a song. Sweep in front of your own front door before you sweep in front of mine. Do you know what group sang that? Do you, do you know who, who, who that was, who that was? In fact, they, they, I heard it, the Williams Brothers. And, and, and the William brothers have been the spirit of liberty, some of them, a couple of them. But it's important to understand that your success or failure is dependent on how you deal with your own demons. So because we all have demons we're fighting, the bottom line is you got to work on you I got to work on me. We got to work on us. Come on and help me preach it. And, and the best thing we could do is get our mouth off of other people because they are not the only problem. Sometimes you are your own problem. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. 
we we had we had an awesome men's prayer breakfast yesterday we had an awesome men's prayer breakfast and in that prayer breakfast I shared with our men how prophetic Jonah was in the life of Jesus in Matthew chapter 12 that we just read we'll look at it again Jesus said that this generation is looking for a sign looking looking for a sign and he said the only sign I'm going to give you is the sign of the prophet Jonah as he was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights so will the son of man be in the belly of the earth what a lot of people don't understand is that Jesus would never hear me never refer to an event that he would compare his own life to if it didn't really happen this wasn't just a parable or a story it happened in life Jonah ran from the will of God when I conclude today, I'm going to talk about what it takes for God to make a man a king and a woman a queen. We're going to talk about that. What is interesting is that Jonah decided that he was going to go his way instead of God's way. If I have some honest people in here, could you show me if I have some, if I have some. If, if I have some honest people in here, can you admit, admit with me that at some point in your life, you decided to go your way? You, you went your way. You did it your way. Only to find out that God's way was better than your way. Give it up if you're hearing what I'm saying. We, we have to find that king and we got to find that queen in us. But the only way you do it is God's way. God's way. I am so excited. To be able to celebrate with Charles and Helen today. Uh, at the end of service, I, I'm going to pray for them. But Helen and Charles, I want you to come in, up and join me right now. Give it up for this couple. Amen. No, that's not good enough. Forty years. For 40 years. No, that's not good enough. 40 years. I, I am so honored that your family is here. I see Joe Bob. Where's Joe Bob? Stand up, Joe Bob. We're, we're, we're giving up for this young basketball player. Amen. He's waking up. He's still waking up. Okay, Joe Bob, we have a men's outing coming up uh, the first, I think it's the first Friday in March, right? Yeah, March the 1st, actually. And we're going to UL, and if you're in town, if you don't have a game yourself, I would love for you to join us because the men will be taking their sons and grandsons to a basketball game. Give it up for Joe Bob, basketball player. All right, now. Helen and Charles, I am pausing in my message today to acknowledge and recognize you. You sent me some pictures. Yes, sir. 
And oh my God, when I saw those pictures, I want you to know, look at this beautiful picture on the screen uh, of, of her family, uh, of her family. Take a look, take a look. And, and look at that one. Look, look at that one. Joe Bob, that's your daddy. That, that's your daddy, Joe Bob. And, and he's outside on the grass on his knee oh, go back to that other picture <laughs> i'm still preaching look that that's charles this man right here and this is his bride that woman right there and and Char charles is on the grass tyrone he's on the grass on his knees in white <laughs> taking his wife's hand in marriage give it up for this beautiful couple amen, amen. i want to say congratulations to you 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 got to help me preach in my sermon today so charles after 40 years of marriage 40 years if there's a word or two that you could give to men who are trying to make 40 years of marriage how did you do it, man? Thing, uh, come on, come on, can get a little close. Yeah, yeah, get, come, come a little close. Listen, I, you got to listen to this answer. Because we got to put it in a book, Charles. What would you tell other men who are trying to make 40 years in their marriage? What would you say? Uh, first thing would be, I, uh... <laughs> and, uh, I, I don't know if they... I, 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 I don't know if you understood that ayah. Uh, I, uh, the ayah means like uh, you just agree. I mean, a lot of things. I know I I know I'm right, Bishop, but to have peace, I say I'm wrong. Wow! Give it up. That's your secret. That's my secret. You know you're right, but you take wrong. Oh my God! Give it up for Charles. That's a that's something. That is something. Okay, I can't stop with Charles. Jarvis, I got to ask Helen. Come on a little closer, Helen. After 40 years of marriage, Helen, if you could talk to some ladies in the house who want to make 40 in their wedding anniversary, what would be your secret? What would you tell the women of the church? I'd tell them to take time with their husband. Um, it's like a job. I, I always say, you know, we go to, we go to our jobs and we take all kinds of stuff. And then we come home and we don't want to tolerate our spouse. Well, you know, I just say, okay, babe, whatever you say, I say. Whatever today is, it's going to be. Oh, my God. I keep talking. I'm oh, and, uh, and we grew up, you know, like we got married young. So we grew up together. Like, so grow, growth yeah. together is necessary. Yeah, we did a lot of talking. We, everywhere we would go, we brought, brought our children. The kids, like you know, when we started having children, they would follow us. We took them with us. We did things with the family, very family-oriented, keep our circle small, 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 you know. Um, it's good, you know, to have friends and, and have associates and all that, but certain things you just don't hell you don't discuss outside your house wow keep your business private yeah. wow okay. so and that's it and we did a lot of kissing oh 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 i can't preach anymore brandon i, I can't preach did you hear what she said did you really hear come on oh my god did the woman said it. The woman said, what did you say? We did a lot of kissing. Wow. They did a lot of kissing. You got 40 years of kissing. Y'all need to write a book. Amen. Give them a pray. Give the Lord praise. Amen. I, 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 I want to say that. I want to say that there are other couples in the church I'm going to acknowledge too, but, but Charles and Helen, you've been with Spirit of Liberty 
over a decade, over 10 years, uh, and, and, and going on 20. And, and I want you to know that as your bishop, I am so honored to be the spiritual leader in your life. And, and I want you to know I'm there. I'm there with you. I'm there in the fight. We prayed for you, Charles, when there was transition. We prayed for Helen when there was needs for prayer in her life. This is the village. It takes a village. Give it up. This is, this is the village. And I'm honored to be your shepherd and your bishop. And you inspire me and our church so much. And these people are faithful. They're here every Sunday. And I just want to give it up. God bless you so much. Give it up for Charles. Give it up for Charles and Helen. Congratulations. When I close the service, I'm going to pray a blessing on your union. One more time, SOL. God bless you. You may be seated. I want, I want Joe and Angela to come up here. I want Joe and Angela to come up here, and I would love Russell and Diane to come up here too if they're avail if they would like to. It's up to you. It's your choice. But here is another couple that we're celebrating today, and oh my God, what! a special couple get a little closer amen get a little closer they are celebrating 25 years of marriage 25 years at the men's breakfast yesterday joe gave us a secret he said that when he proposed to her he no it wasn't the proposal it was when he first met her he said bishop this woman made such an impact she impacted my life so much i remember the exact time that i met her joe what did you tell him? i met her at 505 on the basketball court when i asked her to be my girlfriend on the on the basketball court and he remembers the time Jessica at 505 in the afternoon he stopped playing basketball and huh it was a beeper, it was a beeper. okay and and 1987 at 505 25 years ago he asked this woman to be in his life angela you are blessing joe you're blessing i'm honored to be your bishop give it up 25 years amen love you much amen love you much god bless you amen i have another couple today is that day it is it's, it's just that day is that day come a little closer diane and and russell how many years 44 years 44 years Russell and Diane when when we acknowledge when we acknowledge Paul and Marion last Sunday on their 12 years of wedding anniversary I, how many 21 years together all together okay they, they preach in my sermon okay uh, and 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 I want to say that that uh, on last Sunday you reminded me that it was your anniversary as well and I just want to say Russell and Diane God bless both of you 40 what 44 years of marriage let's give it up church congratulations I want you to know I'm honored to be your bishop. I'm happy that I could have you in our congregation and we applaud you today. Let's give it up church, amen. What a blessing. I just wanna say it was God's sin. That's, that's what I like to say. Your answer would be it was a God sin. 
That's correct. <laughs> Let's give it up, church. Amen. God bless you both. God bless you both. I, I am so honored that we could pause and take the time because guess what? They are kings, they are queens, and we want to acknowledge them. Brandon, I see your hand. Last Wednesday, stand up, stand up, give it up. Hey, last Wednesday, I wish you would have told me. Last Wednesday, 20 years. 20 years of marriage for Brandon and for Nicole. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. We want to honor you. Let the church say amen. Wow. How special is that? How special is that? We have a man in our church who I had the chance to visit with yesterday. Donald is in a rehab hospital. After our men's prayer breakfast, I went to an event at Barnes and Noble's bookstore. One of my spiritual daughters wrote a book, it's a book of poems. The title of the book is Running on Empty. Sometimes in life, you're running on empty. I'm in a warm-up suit, in white, that's your bishop, and, and, and to the right of me is the author of the book, one of my spiritual daughters, Stephanie Kirk. And she had a book signing yesterday at Barnes and Nobles. And she texted me and asked, Bishop, could you come? and just support us in the book signing and I did I want you to know that it takes so much to go through life and to deal with life's pain Demika I want you to come up here let's give it up for Demika the wife of Donald Broussard and Demika you and your children have been supporting Donald in his recovery from a stroke and a heart attack. And when I went to see Donald yesterday, you were there. And last week was your birthday. Her birthday was the day before Valentine's. And I prayed and I said, Lord, who do I give this book to today? And D'Amica, God wants me to give you this book. Let's give God praise. Amen. I, I want to say to you, the book is entitled Running on Empty. And when I saw you at, your, at the bedside of your husband yesterday, celebrating the week of your birthday, praying for Donald's recovery, to see your baby girl, the picture you sent me of her with her daddy in the hospital bed. Tamika, words cannot express how much I respect what you are doing as the wife of Donald Broussard. You are hanging in there, you're carrying the load. He's not able to go back and teach right now because he's a teacher. But I want to bless you with this book because I know sometimes you're running on empty. Give it up for Demi. What would you like to say in behalf of your family and for Donald? Just thank y'all for praying. Y'all keep praying. I know God is gonna do it. I didn't been through it to all the people that know that I have, what I have already been through. So y'all just keep pushing, keep praying. Just God got it. God, God. Thank y'all. We love you and your family. Let's give it up for Demika. Amen. You know, church, sometimes it can't be about us. It's got to be about somebody else. And so I want to congratulate all of the people that we're honoring today. 
And uh, I'm going to abbreviate my message. We're going back uh, to the Bible now in 1 Kings. I'm going to close in prayer, and I'm going to pray for Helen and Charles. I'm going to ask that you turn now to the second reading for today. And that second reading is in 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 10. As we read 1 Kings chapter 10, my message today is entitled, When God is Making a King or Queen in You. You have to find that king. You got to find that queen. 1 Kings chapter 10, follow along with me, beginning at verse 1, I'll finish this in a Bible study. In 1 Kings chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, I want you to highlight that phrase, concerning the name of the Lord. The queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. She came to test him with hard questions. Charles said, whenever your queen asks a question, just say yes. Okay, Charles. She came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem, watch this, with a very great retinue. That word means entourage or group or company of people with camels that bore spices very much gold and precious stones now that woman is bringing this she already had wealth the queen of Sheba was already wealthy she's making a journey to meet with the king of Israel, Solomon. And notice she came to Jerusalem with all of this, including spices. Does it say this in your Bible? Very much gold. Let's continue. And precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult, Minister Hilda, for the king that he could not explain it to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon. The house that he had built, that's one thing. The food on his table, that's another thing. The seating of his servants, that's another part of the list. The service of his waiters and their apparel. His cup bearers and his entryway which he went up to the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her, the queen of Sheba. It's like she couldn't take any more. Then she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, 
I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. Don't believe what people say if you don't see it with your own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. This is an important point. Happy are your men and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you setting you on the throne of Israel because the Lord has loved Israel forever therefore he made you king to do justice and what righteousness then she gave the king 120 talents of gold the woman left the king gold. Spices in great quantity and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Also the ships of Haran, Hiram, which brought gold and offer, brought great quantities of almug wood and precious stones of Ophir. She had ships too. She had to put them on ships, Brandon, to get them to King Solomon. And the king made steps of the almond wood for the house of the Lord and for the king's house and harps and string instruments for singers. There never again came such almug wood, nor has the like been seen to this day. Now King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked beside what Solomon had given her. According to the royal generosity so she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. We thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Finding the king or queen in you. And what I want you to notice, we're talking about a woman of color. This is Black History Month. As I wrap up my message, I want to show you a picture of the Queen of Sheba. This woman could be your relative. She might be in your bloodline, Angela. When we post her picture, you're going to see that this woman was not poor, she wasn't broke, she had her own wealth, she had her own identity, hello, and she decided that she would travel to meet the king of Israel. The picture you're looking at on the screen is what we think the Queen of Sheba looked like. Very attractive woman. You can't tell from where you're sitting, but on her, nef on her left nostril, she has a diamond right on her nose. The Queen of Sheba, this is the woman that decided she would go and find her king. She took a trip 
that was about 1,300 miles walking on a donkey, horseback, whatever. They didn't have Mercedes or BMWs back then. But she made it. Here is where she came from. Sheba today is the country of Yemen. Yemen is now involved, I believe, with a civil war. And I believe that those three black people that were shot, that it came from a drone from somewhere in that region. Post it one more time for me, please. This is a map of Yemen that used to be called Sheba. The queen came from Saudi Arabia. The queen by name is Makeda. Her name is not mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 10. But history tells us her name. Her name is Makeda. And her name means greatness. Thank you. Put her picture up one more time. And I'm going to close with some teaching points. Finding the king and the queen in you. You see, thank you. The only way you could arrive at your destiny and the only way that you could find success in your life is to deal with your own demons and work through the evil that people will do to you. You've got to understand that life is not fair. You're going to have good people. You're going to have evil people. You're going to find that there will be people who will cause problems in your life. Then there will be other people who are going to bless your life. And that's what we're talking about in this message today. As I close, I want to point out back to 1 Kings chapter 10. I want to point out a couple teaching points that we could get from the Queen of Sheba and the King Solomon from Israel. In 1 Kings chapter 10, the first thing I want to point out is in verse 1. Now when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. Let's pause right there. Here is the first point, and Jarvis, I'll ask that you just note the points because I don't have them in my notes. What I want you to understand is that in order for you to succeed in life, you have to be spiritual and have a relationship with God. If you're trying to find the king in you or the queen in you, it's got to start with your own relationship with God. What we see in verse 1, Randy, is that when the queen of Sheba went to King Solomon, she came because of the name of the Lord. That's the first thing. She had money already. She had fame already. She had gold already. She had material possessions already. So what she was going after was the God that was in Solomon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's give God praise. What she was going after <laughs> is that she was attracted to the God that was in this man. She traveled about 1,300 miles. That kind of travel was not like we travel today. 
United Airlines did not exist. She did not have a Benz or BMW. She did it by foot, horseback. Here is my point. If you're going to find the king or the queen in you, you better find God first. You better find God first. Because, hear me, the value, leave that point up there for me, thank you. The value that you bring into a queen's life or the value you bring into a king's life has to start with your own relationship with God. Let me tell you, at the end of the day, what a woman like Helen can appreciate about a husband like Charles is that that man comes to church with her woman, with his woman. When they're in church, they're sitting just like they're sitting right now. Charles already has a relationship with God. Helen already has a relationship with God. If you're going to find the king in you and the queen in you, it's got to start with the God in you. She traveled all those miles to go and see King Solomon because of his God. Next point. I have two more and we're done. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 10, in verse 6, then she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes and indeed the half was not told to me. Pause right there. My second point is this. Not only do you have to find the God in you to find the king in you, not only do you have to find the God in you to find the queen in you, the second thing you have to understand is that you can't get information from people on the street. You better know for yourself when you talk to people don't go by the words of people. Go see for yourself. This woman, Priscilla, did not decide to conclude anything about King Solomon. Although he was handsome, although he was wealthy, although he had all of this going for him, she said, I heard it in my country in Saudi Arabia. He was in Jerusalem. He, and, and she said, I heard about you, but I did not conclude anything until I came to see for myself. Here is my final point. I'll give you my third point, but let, let me just emphasize this second point. Don't listen to everybody. Do you think Helen and Charles could celebrate 40 years because they listened to everybody? Do you think Charles could have Helen as his queen because he listened? To everybody? How many of you know, church, everybody have an opinion? Everybody have an opinion and they all have something to say. But at the end of the day, they don't go home with you and you don't go home with them. At the end of the day, you've got to know for yourself.
give the Lord a clap offering and and and, and, and turn to someone and tell them keep people out your business tell, yeah just just keep people out your business keep keep people out of your business <laughs> last point last point so that second point Jarvis was that you have to see for yourself and there it is the second point is that you see for yourself you don't go by what people say. The Queen of Sheba said, I'm going to travel 1,300 miles by foot, horse. But I'm not going to make a decision, Minister Hilda, until I see for myself. You got to know people for yourself everybody's got an opinion but you've got to know people for yourself you have got to know not only what you see but there's something even deeper there's a spirit of a man there's the spirit of a woman and you can't just go by what they have you gotta go by who they are my last point and we're done it's found in verse 13 if you're gonna find the king or queen in you you have to start with finding the God in you the second thing I said if you're gonna find the king or queen in you you've got to see things for yourself experience for yourself and know for yourself my last point for today it's found in verse 13 it's not an unlucky number in verse 13 it says now King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired whatever she asked Besides what Solomon had given her according to the royal generosity. So she turned and went to her own country and she and her servants. My final point for today. In this 13th verse. Tim, I see a nugget here, man. And the spiritual nugget that I see is that it says, Now King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired. Wow. Point number three. If you're going to find the king are queen that God created you to be you gotta be a giver you gotta be a giver you can't just be a taker you gotta be a giver you can't just be a taker there are some people who will just take and take and take and take and tomorrow they're taken and taken and taken but you never see them giving anything you gotta be a giver you can't always take Watch men in your life, ladies, who are just takers, not givers. They're just takers. They take and they take and they take and they take and they take. Now, now, listen, I can't just stop with the men. Because there's some sisters, too, who 
devil will take and take and take and take and take. I'm going to keep it fair and balanced. If you come to this church, you're going to hear the full side of the story. Not one side of the story. Solomon gave her all she desired. One of, let me close, by saying that one of the attributes of God is that God is a giver. Look for people in your life who are givers, not takers. Givers, givers, not takers. Look, look, the Bible says, these are some hard words, Minister Patty, but it's all biblical. The Bible says, and Solomon gave her all she desired. When you could give someone all that they desire, it's not about you. Solomon entertained the queen of Sheba, who was already wealthy, already cute. He couldn't add to that. He, she had her own wealth and the Bible says he gave her all she desired. How could you give a woman all she desires if you never ask her what she desires? How can you give a man all that he desires if you never ask him all that he desires you see church we live in the United States of America we are a spoil nation we are so spoiled that people now will tell you, hear what I'm saying, will tell you that if they can't have it their way, it's their way or the highway. People are just straight spoiled. They got to have it their way, period. Church, as I close today's message, I want to say that I'll finish this in a Bible study. But we're looking at two people, a king in Solomon, a queen in the queen of Sheba, Makeda. Makeda is her name. Her name means greatness. You can't have a name that means greatness if you're not already great. But I want to put this in perspective for us today. If you're going to succeed in life, you've got to deal with your own demons. You have to understand that you've got to work past the evil that people are going to do to you. And understand that with God, all things are possible. Church, what we don't read in the Bible is that Solomon married this woman. He married the queen of Sheba. She bore him a son. But what you don't also know is that while she had external beauty, hear me, while she was very attractive, she had a handicap. When you study the life of the queen of Sheba, she was wealthy, she was attractive, she had her own business, she had her own wealth, all of that, but she had a handicap. It is believed she had a club foot. Could you imagine being a queen, looking that pretty, 
going to meet a king who was wealthy, a billionaire already. And you're coming to him limping. Beautiful on the outside, but had a handicap. Church, let me tell you something. We all have handicaps. There is something wrong with all of us. No one is perfect. So while your handicap might be physical, somebody else's handicap might be emotional. But the truth is that we're all broken, Minister Hilda, and we all have some kind of handicap. So stop looking at other people and thank God for what he's done in your life. I'll finish this some other time. My message today is entitled Finding That King or Queen in You. You can't be that king if you don't first find God. You can't be that queen if you don't already have God. If you're going to find that king and that queen in you what was my second point you got to see for yourself don't go by what people tell you you got to learn individuals on your own don't go by what somebody tell you about your husband or wife and the third point is right there learn to be a giver and if you become a giver in your life, when it's not about you, you're looking for somebody else you could bless, you will find out that your life is going to go to the next level. I want you to give God praise all over the sanctuary. Bow your heads with me. I'm going to ask the ushers to get ready, distribute our envelopes, and then I'm going to pray by praying a blessing over Helen and Charles. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask everyone to get an envelope. If you didn't get one when you walked in church, I'm going to ask that you raise your hands, and we're going to ask now that you get an envelope. Everybody is a tither. Everybody is a giver. And we thank the Lord for his grace. We thank the Lord for his goodness. I want everyone to give in this offering. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for making a king. God is a king maker. God is a queen maker. Thank you, Lord, for making us to be what you want us to be. No one is born in perfection. No one is born with it all together. We all have to get it together. Sometimes it takes a lifetime. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, as we prepare to dismiss and as we prepare to bless this offering, I ask right now, Lord, that you forgive us for being judgmental towards people, for making it all about us, when, Lord, it's never all about us. Lord, help us to have a deeper relationship with you. Because I can't ever find the king in me until I can find the God in me. We can't ever be the best version of ourselves if we're always taken and taken and taken and taken. We got to learn to be a giver. And so, Father, we ask your blessings now. On our tithes and offering, I thank you for what you've done in all of our lives. This is my prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Get your envelopes ready. Charles and Helen, come and join me. I'm going to give us a benediction with a prayer for this couple. going to ask that if you don't have to walk, please don't. We're still in church. And I'm going to ask now that as we close the service, I'm going to ask that you face me. Face me. And then I'll have you to turn. If you don't have to leave, please don't. I'm going to dismiss us all in just a moment. Minister Hilda, come and join me. I want to say that as we prepare to conclude this service, Charles and Helen, congratulations. I'm going to ask that you turn and face each other now. Helen and Charles, 40 years ago, you exchange vows. Do you remember that? Do you remember, Charles, when you were on your knees on the grass in that white suit? <laughs> she, made she made you remember that. I am honored that I can bless your 40 year anniversary. Minister Hilda, I'm gonna ask that you take the floral arrangement from Helen. Those of you that would, okay. Okay, just before, give it back to her. I, I didn't know I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have, listen, 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 church. And for those of you that wanna take pictures, you can come up, you can actually come closer because I have them facing your back. But if you would come up, you could stand up and you could get a better shot. All right, go ahead. So this is my original, the roses, this bouquet, is my original uh, wedding bouquet from 40 years ago. Uh, it's been through a lot, um, a friend in, in the church. She Did you all hear that? It's been through a lot. What about them? I moved it from, you know, different places, and, but I always kept up with it. I always kept up with it. I always, and I would show Charles every anniversary. I said, look, this is our wedding bouquet. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> so I just wanted to say, you know. You have the original bouquet of roses from 40 years ago when you got married. Let's give the Lord a clap offering, everyone. <laughs> Amen. For those of you that would like to stand to my left, if you want to take pictures, you could come up to my left. I'm going to ask that Charles and Helen come a little closer. I want you to still face each other. Face each other. Amen. Because I, I want you to get pictures. I, I want the audience to get your pictures. And now, Charles, I want you to hold her hands like you did on your wedding day. You don't have to get on your knees today. But on the day that you were married 40 years ago, Charles, you said something like this. And I'm going to ask that you repeat those words again. I, Charles, I, Charles, take you, Helen, take you, Helen, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife. Forty years now, forty years now, I would marry you again. I would marry you again. And today, and today, I'm remarrying you. I am remarrying you. Forty years later. Forty years later. Today, today. I, Charles, I, Charles, take you, Helen, take, take you, Helen, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife, for richer or for poorer, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, I will love you, I will love you, I will cherish you, I will cherish you, and forsaking all others, and forsaking all others, I will cling to you, I will cling to you, for my entire life, for my entire life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
That's a man. Give it up for that man. That's a man. Oh, my God. Congratulations. And now, Helen, it's your turn. Forty years ago, Helen, you said these words to Charles. While he was in a white suit on the ground, with a jerry curl in his head, she said these words. I would like you to repeat them now. I, Helen, I, Helen, take you, Charles, take you, Charles, to be my wedded husband, to be my wedded husband, again, again. Forty years later, forty years later, I would choose, I would choose, to marry you again, to marry you again. And so now, I, Helen, I, Helen, take you, Charles, take you, Charles. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. I will cherish you. I will cherish you. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. I will cling to you. I will cling to you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, you went just a little quicker than I expected. I want you to face each other. Yeah, yeah, she said, you know, we, we did a lot of kissing, she said. We did a lot of kissing. You know, that, that's, that's a clue. That, that, that's a hint. Okay, Charles, on the day that you was married 40 years ago, I wasn't your bishop. I didn't have the privilege of being the priest who did your wedding ceremony. But today I'm your bishop. And I am honored as a man of God ordained to the ministry and licensed by the state of Louisiana and by the United States of America. I'm honored to confer, confer upon you and Helen. You are now husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Turn and face the audience. They're married again. Let's give it up, church. Let's give it up for Helen and Charles. They're married again. 40 year wedding anniversary you could give her the bouquet of flowers again helen that is really so meaningful that you would hold on to the original roses 40 years later in every room in the house uh i kept you know i i tried to keep it up after a while you know a little dust got on oh uh -huh. but uh there's a lot of dust in 40 years of time. It, you know, I, Charles and I, we've been through some things, you know, and God's been so good to us. Oh, boy, if I could, I can't even, I can't even say it. That's just how good he's been. You know, there's been times when, you know, my husband, he was under the weather. And I remember God just came there and just healed his body, yeah, made him whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sick. Yes. Oh, the devil tried to take me out. I know. But God. But God, Helen. Hey, Helen, you got more work to do. You got more work to do. You say you a living testimony. I want all my family to be saved. That yeah. is my. That's your heart's desire. That's my heart's desire. You know, uh, we 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 talked about doing this and. When we, when, when, I, when we reached 35 years, we was going to do it. And I said, oh, well, we're going to do it when we make 40. We planned this in like four or five days. Wednesday is when I text you. Yeah, you text me, Wednesday. And, and God really put it on my heart because I love everyone. I love all of y'all. And we love you too, Ella. We love you too. You know, I, I believe in you receiving your flowers while you're here. Nice words. Kindness. Yeah, yeah. Look for good thing in people. There's more good than bad. Yeah. 
you know, and I, I, I just wanted to just tell God thank you for these 40 years. And I'm praying for another 40. I know you're right. Any final words, Charles? Uh, not really, Bishop. I'm not a big talker. She said, it all. she said it all. Let's give it up for this beautiful couple, Charles and Helen, celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. And so now, Daryl, you got to get a picture of the bishop with this couple. I'm going to ask now that as we conclude the service that you would do that for me. And Helen, I'll ask that you stand in the middle. Charles, come, come back. Stand on her. Right. A little closer. Thank you. Let's give it up for Minister Hilda. She's back. Give it up. I already told Minister Hilda I'm putting her on the calendar for, so for her to come and preach again on a Sunday. And so we're, we're working on that and we'll announce it soon. Minister Hilda, I want you to pray over the offering and we're going to have the benediction as well. Is there any final announcement we need to make? All I'm going to say in closing is that on the first weekend of March, the men are having a car wash and a plate lunch fundraiser. We are, we are changing the carpet in the entire sanctuary. We're changing the carpet and we're starting probably next week. So we're going to be contacting you and asking you for a special love offering by the first Sunday of March. All right. And so there's some events coming up. We'll tell you more about it and you'll hear from us soon. Minister Hilda, would you dismiss us? Father God, we thank you. We thank you because we have a relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, because we are givers. We thank you, Lord, because the relationship we have with you is what we see for ourselves. Not other people's testimonies, but testimonies that we've had for ourselves, just like the Queen of Sheba did. Father God, we thank you for this ceremony. We thank you for the gift of love. We thank you for the gift of persistence. We thank you, Father God, for you are our God and you are our King. We exalt you, we praise you, we acknowledge you on today. We thank you for all the words that you have given to us on today. That it will be seed that will be sown on precious ground. Father God, we exalt you. We praise you. We magnify you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Lion of Judah, the Rose of Sharon. We extol you on today. And as we go back home, we will find our homes even better than we left it. Father God, we ask you that you become our keeper. Bless us and keep us. And we extol you that every word that comes out of our mouth will be acknowledgeable and acceptable to you. Bless this day as Bishop has blessed us. Let your word be seed sown on fertile ground. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and may he be gracious to you. May he give you peace and may you go well on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Hilda. The ushers are coming now to receive your gifts. Everybody is a tither. Everybody is a giver. I'm writing a check today. I'm going to ask that you give with Cash App or PayPal. You could give with your uh, debit card or credit card on the envelope. 
and we're going to ask that you prepare to give now. Is May available? Where is May? May, come on up. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you make that announcement, and I'll ask that you close. We're closing now. Give us one minute. Amen. Go. go. Hallelujah, Spirit of Liberty. Come on and stand to your feet. If you know that it's your season to be blessed. Open up the window and pour you out a blessing. Hey, it's your season to be blessed. Hey, it's your season to be blessed. You are proud. You stood the test. You stood the test. Hey, yeah. He's gonna open up and pour you out a blessing. It's your season. It's your season. Hey, yeah. To be blessed. I've been to the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. Come on. He's going to open up the window and pour me out a blessing. Hey, it's your season to be blessed. Come on, church. Come on. It's your season to be blessed. To be blessed. God made you a promise. You stood the test. You stood the test. He's going to open the windows of hell and pour you out a blessing. Pour you out a blessing. It's your season. It's your season. It's your season to be blessed. I've been through the fire. Come on. I've been through the flood. Yes. But I'm standing here all because of his blood. He's going to open up the windows and pour me out a blessing hey god it's your season to be blessed it's your season that's it to be blessed god made you you stood the test he's gonna open up the window and pour you out a blessing it's your season it's your season. It's your season. Say it's your season. It's your season. It's your time. It's your season. It's your time. It's your season. You ought to clap your hands. It's your season. You ought to move your feet. It's your season. You've been praying. It's your season. And you've been crying. It's your season. And you've been working. It's your season. And you've been waiting. So it's your season. It's your season. Say it's your season. It's your season. It's your season. It's my season. Yeah. It's my season. Oh my God. You've been good. You've been merciful. It's my season to be blessed. Come on and give God some praise, y'all. Come on and give him praise for your next blessing. Let me have your attention. Give the Lord a clap offering. We're about to leave and we cover you with the blood of Jesus. Uh, Charles and Helen, I am going to send to your phone a song that I was going to dedicate uh, to you on your wedding anniversary. It's a song by Tamala and David. Um, and it's a, uh, yes, it's uh, Tamala Mann and her husband, David. And the song is entitled Ups and Downs. I'm going to send it to your phone. 
I'm going to ask Minister Patty quickly tell us about your event. And if you need prayer, I'm asking the ministers to stick around. Amen. Good morning, SOL. Well, good afternoon. Um, just want to share, as Bishop was saying, um, Heart to Heart, my ministry. We're hosting, um, it's, um, the theme is A Moment at the Well. Everybody has a well experience. Everybody had a well experience in here. Amen. So it's going to be May 10th on Friday at 6 o'clock right here at SOL. And we'll have more information forthcoming. God bless you. A woman's conference. The Lord bless you. It's coming up. Say this with me. Go with God and he will go with you. I love you and there's nothing you could do about it. God bless you. You're